My name is Claudius Groy. I'm a master blender and I spent the last 20 years in the cigar industry. Today, I'm here in Peru. Peru is the country where the tobacco is born. This is the place where Mother Nature put for the first time the tobacco in this planet. I want to taste it. I want to understand it more. I want to make it for the first time in my life in 100% Peruvian puro. This is the stuff, the goodie bag. The goodie bag. The place is called the Wanguerra. We have uh, 70 hectares. But it starts here. Look at this. All this place. All this place, tobacco, everywhere, everywhere. So you know what? Look at this. It's big, it's thick, it's green, it's it's sticky. You see my fingers, so when I touch this, you can feel the stickiness. It's a, it's a, it's a miracle of mother nature. about cigars and passion about tobacco and today I'm here in Peru to discover where the tobacco was planted by man and nature for the first time in our planet. This is this region of San Martin where Tarapoto is. There we're going to visit someone that he grows tobacco, he uses a very special seed we got to find out uh, uh, what's going on there. I want to show you the behind the scenes uh, of tobacco in Peru. For a few years, Gennaro was always calling me saying, you have to come to Tarapoto, you have to see the tobacco here. The good thing about Peru is the soil, the humidity, and uh, the sun exposure. It gives uh, that special uh, je ne sais pas quoi. We are in, uh, in Peru in uh, South America. Tobacco here, it is not only about cigars or smoking. It is something that is really deep into the culture of the people here. Tobacco in Peru is very famous, but Gennaro is the only one planting tobacco here. A few years ago, I met a Gennaro. So when he said that he's making tobacco there, I was like, I have to go to visit him. Every year, the same lot is used only once. Uh, I transplant uh, 10 hectares, 10 hectares, 10 hectares, and I cover in one year the whole 70 hectares. The mother and father of uh, tobacco came from Peru. Here where we are 40 years ago, it was a lot of cocaine growing. I wanted to do something from zero to the end product. So we start with the seed. It's a very fertile soil. And doing this, uh, we just prepared uh, a perfect bed uh, for uh, the future plant of tobacco. These are tobacco seeds. They are so small, it's incredible. This is ash. We mix uh, the seeds inside the ash and mixing uh, all together this is the skin of the rice. So this is the nursery. All this place here, from teeny tiny plants, they're going to reach the size to be in plantation. There is a lot of care, a lot of love here because we're going to make, for the first time, a plant of tobacco. More we protect the plant, more roots will develop. Stronger roots, stronger plant, more metabolism. In 20 days, uh, we're going to start uh, to clean uh, the little spots. So there is a lot of work even in selection. Uh, 
we gotta be careful not to break the plants. Uh, it's extremely complex all here. Because remember, the future of the plants starts here. Picking by hand, and here we go. Look at all the roots here. Into the fields, it stays between 80 to 95 days. This is a tobacco plantation. This is the green ocean that when I saw the first time, uh, fell in love with it. The place uh, is uh, where the mother and father of the tobacco plant comes from. This is the flower, look. Beautiful, uh, like a pink, uh, and these are going to be the capsules. Inside uh, one of these, there is going to be 1,100 seeds. The plant goes from zero to seven feet in three and a half months. This is a miracle plant. So, here we go. Look at this. This is Mother Nature. This is the power of Mother Nature. All the uh, little plants that they were little babies, now they are full in development. It is, uh, you know, green, big, uh, sticky. I can, I can see the, uh, you know, the, the rain? It is uh, just, uh, you know, giving care to the plants. This is going to be a cigar. It's amazing. I want quality. I want super ultra quality. How you get the seeds? We source. <laughs> you travel around, you see what's good, you try, you speak to people that know. And smuggle. this. You smuggle seeds? Or <laughs> we sourced it. Claudio, it's uh, definitions <laughs> now, it's not the moment. <laughs> this plantation is so huge, it's uh, basically the entire valley that Gennaro has uh, to grow tobacco here. He said, oh, I have a little plantation, but this guy owns the entire valley here. Yeah. Are you drifting, Gennaro? <laughs> the leaves are picked by hand every day, very early in the morning. There is a mystical sound in plantation during the picking process. Very early, no other sounds, just the birds and you. And you hear that specific sound. Tuck, tuck, tuck. That's magical. That's the sound of tobacco. I would call them up and I would call it like every three months, three months. And the guy after, after maybe two years, is like, listen to me, stop calling me. Bring some tobacco so I can try it. And I sit down with him and he liked the tobacco. We came across this Pelo de Oro. People that smoked this Pelo de Oro, they were like, no, it's the best tobacco ever that was done, and this and that. So we tried and we tried, and then the tobacco fermented well, and then we smoked it, and then we said, let's do some more. Here we are in the tobacco bar. Here, another life of the leaves is starting. See? This is what we are talking about. They will turn from a deep green into a very dark brown. A process that will change completely the texture, the taste, the color of the leaves. When the leaves are green, are full of water and there is a lot of chlorophyll. So there is this natural chemical change within the leaves that they are going to turn the chlorophyll and the other elements of the, of the leaf into starches. The starches are converted in sugar. So in this stage of the drying process, it is called the curing, when the leaves are very yellow, are full of sugar. Right now, the smell of sugar inside the barn is amazing. It's very, very powerful. You can smell a sugary thing in the air. When it's too hot, they are drying too fast. So we cool down the place and we open the windows. When it's too cold, we do little holes in this alley here in the middle and uh, we light up a charcoal to 
to raise the temperature and to maintain the humidity as well. It is hot, it is humid, but these places are built this way and at the end of this process we are going to have leaves ready to be fermented. We are in the warehouse finally where we ferment the tobaccos. All those leaves, uh, all that, that, that care and passion and love uh, we gave uh, to the leaves, uh, they are finally here. The composition of the leaf uh, is going to be changed uh, for the rest of the life of this tobacco. These leaves, after one year, year and a half, uh, are going to be very different. Right now we cannot smoke these leaves. The nicotine level is too high. Through the fermentation, we are going to put down the level of nicotine. The leaves are going to be enriched with the essential oils that we need in tobacco. All those beautiful aromas, all those beautiful flavors that we smell, we feel, are going to be fixed in the leaf during the fermentation. The fermentation could be between eight months and a year and a half. There is a specific temperature set for the fermentation. When it's higher than that, then the tobacco is going to be taken from the pile and you make it rain. They spray water on top of these leaves to give us some moisture. The leaves are too dry to be worked. Each leaf is hand sorted by our ladies the ladies here are selecting the leaf by size and by texture. The selection is so important to keep the chain of quality that everybody wants to achieve. Here the, the smell of ammonia is very, very strong. <coughs> oh boy, it's very spicy. This is uh, like, uh, you know, a true, like a chef, salt and pepper. They're going to stay here to stabilize uh, these leaves. After this, uh, are going to be packed in base, uh, ready for aging. The leaves are in base like this, aging before to make a blend. It's amazing that the smell here is completely different. From the river here in Tarapot. If you have a two or three of those, uh, watch out for that. Felipe, God bless you. It's like, uh, it's the one that taught us the tricks of uh, the book. So, uh, big respect to him. Eat oh, this, you have a three oranges, concentrated. I don't know. Three. Third, he said. How many? No. Where is that now? Normally, in the case, I forgot. That I want to show Claudio there's this guy. The fish that he grows are like a thousand pounds from the Amazonian blow my mind. <laughs> it's like a dinos, dinosaur, dino, like dinosaur. <laughs> King is back. Boy, Molly. <laughs> okay. And this is a big cook that I go for six hours. So. Different cultures all together, no borders, just here to enjoy life because of tobacco. More I'm seeing these things, more excited I am. I have to buy some tobacco. The 
but, but here we don't sell tabaco. I told you before. I sell tabaco only to one person. Come on. No tabaco can move from here. Can you switch a second the camera? Gennaro, buttanazza la miseria. Come cazzo faccio che non sono andato a comprare tabacco? Claudio, ma tu hai perso la capa. Ma, ma che tu... capa? Che ci devo fare 25.000 sigari a quelli? No, non esiste proprio. Fammi... Ma che stai facendo? Io sto... io... Ma io te l'ho detto, Claudio. Non fare casino, mi fai solo incazzare. Ma io vengo da Miami, ma minchia, mi sono fatto... I thought that Gennaro was only growing tobacco and selling tobacco, but I was wrong. I have a tiny production of cigars, and uh, I would be honored if you would do the blend. In my career, I made a lot of puros, but never a Peruvian puros. I need to make one. The more I'm seeing these things, the more excited I am. It is fascinating. In Peru, Gennaro is running puros with all his tobaccos from that beautiful field and plantation that we saw. It's placed to rest, so there are micro fermentations to blend all the flavors all together. There is a mystical word here in Tarapoto and in Peru, especially about tobacco. When Claudio heard that, he said, what do they do with this plant? Peruvians are very, very well connected with the spirits of tobacco. The shamans are saying that tobacco is used to heal people, to help people. I, I think I have to do this. I will be with the god of tobacco. We are talking about that. The tobacco is calling me. Here the people respect tobacco and the tobacco is whispering to people. The shaman says that they can even heal people. I need to get that energy from the Amazon jungle where the tobacco was born. When I got there, boom, I got the revelation. Tarapoto is an amazing, amazing door to the Amazon jungle. You get there, the smell, the colors. That jungle gives you an energy that nobody, nothing is going to give you. You got to be there. Ceremony is going to be two, three or four hours. They keep saying it depends on your connection with tobacco. The tobacco is going to tell you something. If you are willing to understand what the tobacco is saying, they are going to be free. Here I am, in the middle of the jungle, in this river, and the shaman is in front of me. I'm seeing what the shaman is taking from a dull little glass. And now the shaman is saying that I'm gonna drink that. My head is exploding. My blood pressure, I'm feeling like it's so high that I feel my eyes are going to explode. I think I'm panicking right now. My vision is blurry. I cannot see anymore the green that I was seeing when I arrived in this place. Finally, the first uh, big vomit uh, that is going to release a lot of pressure from my body. Claudio heard tobacco, he said I want to do it. Also because tomorrow we are blending, so he said I want to purge to make the best blend possible to have all the feelings. 
I'm in tears. I'm feeling exhausted. And I still feel something inside me that it's very, very wrong. That is the magical moment I was waiting for. I'm feeling uh, finally that connection uh, that I was dreaming of. The tobacco is talking to me. I feel something around my body that is happening. I don't know what it is, uh, but the pain uh, is going. I'm starting uh, to hear again uh, the birds, the noise of the water, the noise of the jungle. I'm feeling uh, very emotional. I'm feeling sensitive uh, to everything that is around me. Sounds, uh, things, uh, colors, uh, light. Uh, I don't know, I wanna cry. For the first time in my life, I don't know why, but I wanna cry. Everything uh, seems like uh, exponentially strong. I would like to keep uh, my tears, uh, but I don't know, I'm crying. I feel like uh, there is a barrier that is gone. The emotion are flying. I don't know how many hours I spent uh, in that river, but now I need some rest. Experiencing what what these guys that were doing uh, like 2,000 years ago, that's something special. Support to him. In the Amazon after breakfast, no bad. <sighs> this is why I came, this is why I'm here. All these tobaccos in front of me are Peruvian tobaccos. Finally, I'm going to blend a Peruvian puro. I have here Pelo de Oro, this mythical tobacco from Peru. I have other tobaccos that Gennaro is growing here. And now I'm feeling ready to start the blend. These tobaccos in front of me are talking to me. They are whispering something that I want to translate in a cigar. There is a one specific thing that I do always. One by one, all the different tobaccos, not only the seed, but as well the part of the plant where the leaves are coming, I try them one by one. I make an X-ray of the leaf to understand the taste, the stimulation, the aftertaste. This is like a, a dream. I'm in the country where tobaccos were born. I have uh, to understand uh, what this tobacco has to say before to put this into a blend. This is the first time uh, the very unique flavors are coming from tobaccos uh, that I never smoked before. This is the Perro de Oro. This is something special. There is always uh, that moment uh, that we smoke a blend and we say, oh, this is the one, this is good. But right away, there is the question, uh, 
and if we change at the end uh, just a little bit of this uh, how it could be mm. creamy sweet These plants are coming together. The tobacco is whispering how it wants to be used in a blend, and I'm seeing the results. The sweetness, the saltiness, the acidity, the bitterness of one of the tobaccos now is in harmony with the stimulations of the other tobacco. The strength of El Ligero, the uniqueness of the Pelo de Oro, this is the music to my ears. Master Blender should take a decision and he should know when a blender is 100% approved to be not a good blender, but a great blend. Today, I'm 100% sure this blender is going to be one of the greatest I ever did in my life. process to get this blend done it has been maybe the most unique of my life. The taste, the stimulation, the aftertaste, the complexity, this is spectacular. Finally, 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 we got the cigars made and now into the aging room, cold temperature, uh, control the humidity, they're going to rest for a very long time before I to enjoy them. Terrapot is vibrant, it's colorful. You can see this a very special place uh, in the jungle, in the Amazon, all the colors, uh, the fruits, uh, the food uh, that I never saw before in my life. This was uh, a very special trip, a very special journey. It's fascinating that uh, is one of the few chasing the history, chasing the beginning because only knowing the history, the beginning, you can really understand. Gennaro is here in Peru, and uh, he has 120 employees, so he's giving a better life to 120 families. He's investing here and uh, making sure that people have a better life. A great honor to have Claudio here, even if we try to buy some tobacco, but uh, nothing is happening about that, so... Tobacco here is religion. Tobacco here is culture. Right now I feel so full of joy, energy, connection. Peru gave me something very unique and I want to discover more and more about tobacco. There are so many places around the world that deserve to be discovered. Your tobaccos has to be discovered more and more and more. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good.